the Everyday Bible Study. Uh, we're hoping that you're having a really great day. We're in the evening, and uh, we're down here in southeastern Kentucky, and uh, it's uh, been an interesting time of the year. Uh, the days are warm, and the evenings are cool, and uh, it's evening here, but it, the house still hasn't cooled down yet, uh, but I'm sure it will be before later this evening. And it's a beautiful time of the year. We're in the fall while the leaves are starting to turn colors, and uh, it's a beautiful time. And we're going to talk about, um, uh, Jesus is going to talk again about the kingdom of heaven. And of course, he, he came to bring heaven to earth. He established the church, and the church is uh, uh, basically God's kingdom here on earth. And uh, it prepares us for the kingdom to come. Uh, to, for the uh, new Jerusalem that will occur and prepares us for heaven to be in his presence. And uh, he's going to uh, provide for us a couple of uh, um, uh, parables. And if you remember what a parable is, if you don't know, a parable is a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Basically, God's trying to, uh, excuse me, Jesus is uh, trying to get across to us uh, spiritual concepts that would be very hard to explain other than using these earthly stories. And this, uh, we're in chapter 25. We're going to start with the first verse there. I'm going to tell this uh, parable of the ten virgins. Uh, then it says here, Then the kingdom of heaven will be uh, like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. Uh, for when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but they took, um, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. And this was back, uh, you know, during more ancient times, and uh, they didn't have flashlights, uh, they didn't have LEDs. Uh, when they had to go out, uh, and uh, uh, you know, most of the time when you went somewhere, you had to walk, and uh, so um, they only had small oil lamps. Uh, typically that they would use uh, to light a house uh, when it got light and um, you know this lamp could also act kind of like a torch and um, the Bible talks about uh, the Bible being a lamp uh, before our feet and, and that's, that's one thing too that we've got to it kind of tells us we've got to trust God and sometimes we can only uh, in the dark we can only see to walk one step ahead and we don't know what's beyond that point but uh, it does provide us, um, um, you know, a bit of light when in situations where there is no light. And uh, here they had these uh, small lamps, and uh, the lamps were typically terracotta. Uh, they were made, uh, you know, same thing that they'd make their earthenware in, and uh, they uh, would use um, some sort of oil, most typically olive oil, and uh, that's something that they could grow. And uh, they would uh, burn that uh, olive oil. Uh, it'd be very similar to a candle nowadays, uh, but uh, it was uh, something that they could keep with them all the time. And they didn't have uh, manufacturing as we know it. Uh, so this was the common way that you'd go about uh, illuminating things in the dark and being able to see in the dark is to have these oil lamps. And uh, they're, they don't put out a lot of light, but they they. I put out enough where you just can see at least one step ahead of you. And it said here, um, as the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry uh, saying, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. So uh, we don't know why the bridegroom was late. Uh, the situations were a little bit different too. Now when we have weddings, we tend to focus on the pride. But in those days, men were uh, considered higher in society and uh, there was more focus on the bridegroom or the one that would be the husband uh, except instead of the bride and um, in this particular case this is referring this bridegroom they're referring to it's talking about Jesus Christ and uh, the uh, bride of Christ in the Bible is referred to as uh, a reference to the church so they said here's the bridegroom come out to meet him then all these virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish uh, said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for you, uh, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And you know, uh, they didn't have a Walmart, or they didn't have a Myers or um, a Target store. 
and uh, especially something that would stay open 24 hours. And uh, so to, to go into the village and try to buy more oil uh, for your lamp, especially when you can't see where you're going, uh, that could be a very difficult thing. And those uh, oil dealers probably were asleep and uh, not going to be selling oil that light at night. Uh, but uh, so that would probably have been a, a fruitless endeavor anyway. But um, uh, it says here, and while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Now afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, open, uh, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Uh, watch therefore, for you ne know neither the day or the hour. And uh, it's kind of interesting that this is talking about oil because this oil is also symbolic. Whenever they were talking about oil, this is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this lamp, uh, this parable is talking about the church. And uh, the uh, Holy Spirit is uh, what lives within us whenever we're uh, uh, born again, whenever we become a Christian. It's a gift that's given to us. And it's God's presence that lives inside of mankind. And uh, the Holy Spirit, when the day of Pentecost, when the church got started, and it came upon uh, the people that were there that were waiting in the upper room, it came upon them as tongues of fire. And uh, you think of that as being similar to these oil lamps burning. And uh, these... Um, uh, you can see here we're we've got an ambulance going by. If you hear a little bit of noise, that's what's happened. Uh, but uh, it says here that uh, you know the, um, they didn't have their oil. That was symbolic of the Holy Spirit, and uh, we need to walk in the Spirit as Christians. That's actually a command that's in the Bible. That means that uh, we're to listen to the voice of God within us, and God will uh, communicate with us. He'll tell us what we need to do, what we. Uh, need to avoid. It'll help keep us from sin. It's called the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit leads us into holiness or holy living. And um, we uh, need to um, walk in the Spirit, listen to God's voice, and uh, allow Him to uh, lead us into the directions that He would lead us. And in that we grow closer to Him and our uh, relationship with Him uh, develops. But we see here that uh, five of these virgins uh, have allowed their uh, the spirit or their oil to to uh, run out, and then uh, uh, the bridegroom, which is Jesus, says, uh, "I do not know you." And if you remember what he says there at the judgment day, that there'll be some uh, that uh, I will um, that will say, "I did all these wonderful things uh, in your name," and uh, Jesus will say to them there at the judgment, uh, "Depart from me." I, I never knew you. And this is very similar. And uh, so uh, we need to keep watch. We need to be watching for his return. And we need to keep watch as to what uh, God would try to tell us. And God will speak to us. He'll speak to us in his word, in the Bible, as we read the Bible. And he'll speak to us by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And with us being uh, attentive to it and being obedient to it. Uh, when God tells us we need to do something, we need to do it. And we need to do it when God tells us. And um, uh, if we reject God, if we're rebellious against Him, uh, then uh, we can quench the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Bible tells us that, that uh, uh, in, in one or two places, that those that endure to the end will be saved. So, uh, But now one thing that God will do with the Holy Spirit is if you uh, stray from God, and if you backslide, you, you do the wrong things, and you get away from God, God's Holy Spirit will call you back and will try to get you uh, doing the right thing for Him again. And uh, sometimes it'll make life very uncomfortable if you're His child. But uh, if you remember that parable that Jesus taught of the 90 and 9, uh, God goes seeking for you if you uh, are to backslide and, and get back into sin. And uh, sin's not a whole lot of fun anymore. Uh, when God is calling you back into righteousness and uh, repentance. So uh, we want to be listening to the Holy Spirit speaking to us in our life. Now we're going to look at another parable here. This is the parable of the talents. And uh, this is, uh, we're in 
uh, verse 14, it says, For it will be like a man going on a journey, who called his servants and entrusted them to his property. One gave five talents, another two, and to another one one, uh, each to his according to his ability. Then he went away, and he who received the five talents went at once and traded them, and he made five uh, talents more. I need to pause this just for a second. Okay, we've taken care of that. And... Um, said uh, verse 17 so also he had two talents and uh, made two talents more but uh, he uh, who had received one talent uh, went and dug into the ground and hid his master's money and uh, so we had uh, and these talents are uh, quantities of money uh, that um, was used in these days and I believe that each talent is the equivalency and correct me if I'm wrong uh, but I believe it is the equivalency of about uh, uh, I'm thinking somewhere between five and twenty years wages so we're talking a lot of money and if you remember a, a denarius which was a common coin uh, that was in a lot of the Bible stories it was worth about a day's wages it'd be worth between fifty and a hundred dollars um, these days but you figure if uh, this uh, uh, talent was worth uh, five uh, years' wages, then uh, it would be uh, worth a huge amount of money. It would be worth probably uh, something like a um, uh, quarter of a million dollars. And they were given a lot of money. Uh, so they were entrusted with a lot. And the one that had five talents, uh, he uh, actually worked and he traded and uh, he did things and he uh, led to uh, earning another five talents doubled his master's money and the one who had two talents did the same thing and doubled his master's money but the one that had the one talent uh, he was afraid of the master and uh, he dug a hole in the ground and just hit it and it says here now after a long time the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them and he who had received the five talents came forward uh, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Uh, I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, uh, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little, and I'll set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, I've delivered to you two talents. Here I've made two uh, talents more. And uh, his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also received the uh, the one that received one talent came forward, uh, saying, Master, I knew you th that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent into the ground. And uh, here you have what is yours. But the master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have no seed. Said, Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at the com my coming uh, I should have received what uh, was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For to everyone um, who has uh, will be given more, and, um, and he will have an abundance. But from him, uh, the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast this worthless servant into the outer darkness, into that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you know, it tells us in the, in the uh, book of James, and James was uh, the half-brother of Jesus, uh, that uh, faith without works is dead. And here we see an example of this in this parable. Um, you know, God... Uh, really wants his uh, servants, his children, to be active, to be working in his kingdom. And uh, what does he want us to do uh, to work? Well, uh, the first thing is, if he gives us talents, and sometimes he'll give us special abilities, or uh, he'll give us people in our life, many ways that he'll uh, do good things for us. And some have a little of this, and some have a lot. Uh, or maybe we'll have material riches, even. Uh, but whatever God gives you, you're supposed to be using it for the kingdom of God. And uh, 
uh, you think of the different ways that uh, we're supposed to honor God. If you look at when Jesus talked about the Ten Commandments, and he spoke um, and summarized the Ten Commandments, he said uh, the way that you fulfill the, the greatest of these commandments is to love God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. And uh, if you, uh, uh, then the second one was uh, to uh, uh, love others as you love yourself, or even more than you love yourself. And uh, when we do these things right here, we're uh, following uh, God's commandments and we're doing good works in the kingdom. When we love God, we're wanting, we're wanting to do good things for them. Let's say you've got a family member or you've got um, a spouse, a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Um, if you really love them, then you want to make them happy. And uh, uh, you would want to do good things for them. Uh, let's say you've got a girlfriend. You'd probably want to take her out to nice places. And uh, if you can afford it, buy her nice meals. And maybe buy her some nice things. And why? Because you love her. And uh, just the same way with God. And, of course, uh, God's, uh, you know, he doesn't need nice things because he can create universes. And, uh, but uh, uh, we show God uh, that we love him by doing uh, what he wants, keeping his commandments, keeping his laws. And also we uh, show that we love him by telling other people about him because he wants more and more people to come into his kingdom. And uh, when we share the gospel, with other people, we're doing God's will. And this, this is ultimately a good work. Uh, that is evidence of the faith that we have in God and in Jesus Christ. And uh, so uh, uh, when we tell somebody uh, the gospel, when we share it with somebody, uh, and, uh, we, or we share a personal testimony about what God has done for us, uh, this uh, leads more people to believe on Jesus Christ, to get saved, and brings them and causes them to uh, have the avenue in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful? You know, Jesus talked about in the parable of the sower. Uh, he said that, uh, um, you know, that seed that he's planting, that which is the word of God, and is what we preach and what we share. Um, if you do that and you share the word of God, it could lead to people getting saved and being brought into his kingdom. And wouldn't it be a uh, beautiful thing if that was uh, carried out in your life? Uh, Jesus said that seed can bring back 30, 60, or 100 fold. And, uh, you know, just because you tell one person about the gospel and he responds to it and uh, he or she becomes a Christian, then they may tell other people. And just sharing it with that one person uh, may end up in 30, 60, or 100 people uh, being in heaven, when you get to heaven, wouldn't it be wonderful to see those people that are there because you share the gospel uh, with some? And that may be a whole lot more there than uh, you actually shared the gospel with because the kingdom of heaven works that way. Uh, the, it keeps getting multiplied and it keeps growing when the people of God do the things that they're supposed to do. And um, uh, But now you don't want to be like that worthless service who was cast into the outer darkness who did nothing and you know that's that's one of the problems that we have in church uh, so often we have so many people who think they're christians but they're not doing a thing they're not telling anybody about uh, jesus they're not feeding the hungry uh, they're not uh, uh, helping people with uh, uh, their material needs and god's and jesus is going to be talking about this in an upcoming verse uh, about how we need to help meet the physical needs of uh, various individuals uh, as well so um, uh, you need to actually uh, be one of these who builds up those talents and who the and who god ends up giving more and uh, does uh, some really good things that uh, can uh, change your life and uh, so uh, uh, let's pray dear heavenly father thank you for giving this uh, this particular message and Lord, this one was um, uh, uh, actually meant more for those that are, are already saved. And we need to keep oil in our lamps. We need to be looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But we need to be ready to do his work as well. And we need to share your gospel uh, with as many people as possible. And Lord, help us uh, to uh, do your good works to help those that are in need and to share your uh, beautiful message of hope with uh, all the various people that need to hear it, all those that uh, need to be born again. 
and need to have your transformation. And Lord, if there's anybody here that has not believed on Jesus Christ as their Savior and they need to repent of their sins and that they need to be born again, we pray that they will believe and they will call out to you and ask uh, you to save them. The Bible tells us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, and Lord, we just want to thank you for this. Uh, so until next time, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, so uh, Lord, uh, we just um, want to pray that uh, you'll give faith to each and every one. And uh, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So until next time, this is John with Everyday Bible Study, praying that you have a great day.